My dream is to be world champion, world lightweight champion in the UFC, have more money than I know what to do with, and have a great life for my, my kids, my grandkids. Conor McGregor achieved every single goal he ever set out to achieve. This video will show you not only how he did it, but how you can apply his tactics to your own life to have whatever you want. Conor's first habit that led him to unprecedented success was singleness of purpose. He had a crystal clear vision of where he wanted to go and he dedicated every iota of his being toward that goal. It's in my head 24 seven. There's nothing else I can think of. I don't, I don't think about nothing else. I don't do nothing else if it's not got to do with fighting. Like, I, I don't really go anywhere though. I don't go anywhere. I, I wake up, I go to the gym, I go get some food, I go back to the gym, I go, I go get some food, and then I go to bed. I, you know what I mean? Sometimes I add in a toilet session. You know what I mean? That, that's what I do. I don't really go anywhere to be seeing people or not. You know what I mean? But I have given every single thing, every ounce of my life to this craft, to perfecting my craft, and I continue to do so. And in the process, I have lost my mind. Now, maybe we can't dedicate every cell of our being to our goal. But a key takeaway here is he knew exactly where he was going the entire time, which brings us to the Harvard study. In 1979, Harvard graduates were asked if they had goals after graduating. It was found that 84% had no goals, 13% had written goals but no concrete plans, and 3% had both written goals and concrete plans. Ten years later, the researchers followed up with the graduating class. They found that the 3% who had both written goals and concrete plans were worth more than the rest of the graduating class put together times 10. If you don't know exactly where you're going, you'll end up pulled in a million different directions this is actually ironically what we've seen with Connor lately. His goals are very scattered now. He's acting in movies, flirting with boxing, running a whiskey company, a media company, a fashion company, and almost doing MMA on the side as a hobby. While it's amazing he was able to become so wildly successful, he can't honestly expect to have the same level of success in MMA as he did before while juggling so many different things. The key takeaway here is laser beam focus on one goal will separate you from the rest of the world. While you don't have to be as obsessed as Connor, just remember that if you don't decide exactly where you want to go, someone else will decide for you. Connor's second key to success was his identity. Your identity is the primary driver of your behavior. Who we subconsciously believe we are determines what we think, do, and feel every day. And Connor used this to his utmost advantage. Connor visualized himself as a world champion for years and years before he actually became one. I saw myself in that light. I saw myself as the as the number one. I saw myself as the champion. Even before anyone else did. I just kept that in my head. I'm a, I am an Irish legend, That's true. man. I'm, I'm a living legend. Yeah, I see myself as the champ already. Already? The, you're the featherweight champion yeah, already? Yeah, of course. I see myself from the, as the champ from day one. He visualized it so frequently and so vividly, his subconscious actually believed it as the truth. In his subconscious believing he really was the world champion, he actually received the thoughts, feelings, and behaviors that a world champion would have long before he was one. I'm going to continue going on this journey, and if the title shot is next, I will take it. If not, at the end of the day, I already feel like that is mine. I already feel like that belt is mine. I'm gonna raise that gold in front of my home country. I have been feeling like the UFC world champion since the day I arrived here. Connor was so unbelievably confident because he was truly thinking and behaving from the place of where he wanted to be. Connor was visualizing himself there every day for years and years in everything he did. He visualized driving the car he would drive. I driving around, driving down in a banger of a car that I had to push start. I'd be still driving a soft top Bentley around beautiful California in my head. He visualized the interviews he would have. I visualized everything. I visualized this conversation. I visualized the walkout. I visualized everything going on. And of course, he visualized the fights. Every drill I did with Connor, every second of that drill, he was in the T-Mobile arena and he was facing the world number one and he was fighting for the world title. And he was able to put himself in that mindset from day one with every lesson we did. Visualization techniques that uh, Connor was doing before I'd heard of anyone else doing them, like he would, he could tell me when he was going to fight, he knew exactly what was going to happen long before it happened because he had done it a thousand times in his head. He had warmed up in backstage, he had heard the crowd, he had smelt the arena, he had seen the audience. He, he would really immerse himself 
in the in the in the fight night. Connor visualized himself as world champion in every aspect of his life so frequently and so consistently that his subconscious believed it was actually his identity and provided him the thoughts, feelings and behaviors of a world champion, which led him to actually become one. And how does a world champion feel? Confident. determined and like they're the best in the world. The most evident example of Connor truly feeling like a world champion was how he felt and acted before and during fights. I remember walking when they were leading me through and I was saying, is this it? Is this where people crumble? Is this what pressure is supposed to feel like? This is easy to me. How do people crumble under this? How do people not embrace this? How does this not energize people? That is why I say I don't feel pressure in there. I do not. I feel free in there. You can see how comfortable on the feet McGregor it's is. It's unbelievable. Look at the angles. Caught him relaxed and smiling. Oh! He slapped him! He feels no pressure and always performs at his absolute best because champions are veterans and have mastered their nerves better than anyone else. Because Connor is operating from the identity of being a champion, his body simply acts accordingly. Psychologists call this concept be, then do, then have. Connor truly felt like he was the world champion by constantly visualizing himself as a world champion even when he was an amateur. This is who he was being. He would then do what a world champion does and eventually have two world championship belts. It's why when they asked him how he felt after becoming double champ, he said, It feels familiar. I saw it so clearly. I swear to God, I saw it so clearly, so consistently. Until it just, until it's here in reality, so. It felt familiar for Connor, despite him obviously never being double champ, because he tricked his subconscious into believing it was his reality a long time ago. But Connor's secret weapon was truly his self-belief. Built through a combination of his singleness of purpose and visualization, he was unstoppable. He knew nobody was more dedicated than him, and he also saw himself as the champion so often that he had the thoughts, feelings, and beliefs of a champion. And one of those feelings is believing you're truly the best in the world. Whatever, I just feel different to these on another level, on another playing field than any of them before me. That's why I know I'm, I have no doubt in my mind that I'm the great, that I will be the greatest of all time. In my in my head already, I am better than everybody, and I know. This insane belief in himself led to self-efficacy. Self-efficacy is an individual's belief in their capacity to act in the ways necessary to reach goals, and it is often a self-fulfilling prophecy. A strong belief in oneself often leads to success, and success leads to an even stronger belief in themselves. So how can we apply some of Connor's techniques for achieving our goals in our own lives? First, singleness of purpose. Know exactly what you want and commit yourself to it fully. The best ship in the world will simply drift at sea if it doesn't have a captain navigating it to a specific location. And second, you must commit to it. The higher the level of commitment, the more likely you are to achieve the goal. Next, visualize it. See yourself every day already having achieved your goal. And when you visualize it for long enough, you begin to truly become the person who is capable of achieving that goal. With enough clarity and repetition, your subconscious will believe that it is your identity and drive your thoughts and behaviors to be consistent with that identity. And finally, believe in yourself. In a study of people attempting to quit smoking, it was found that the number one predictor of whether someone would successfully quit or not was whether they believed they could quit. If I had to summarize Connor's key to success in one word, it would be belief. He became an icon because his level of belief in himself was stronger than the entire world's doubt in him. He had to truly believe he would make it in order to quit his job and pursue MMA full time. And then constantly visualizing that future gave him even more belief on a subconscious level. So at the root of both his actions and mentality was his insane belief in himself. When you know exactly where you're going and you commit wholeheartedly in body and mind to getting there, the universe gets out your way.
That's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it all the way to the end, hit that subscribe button and leave a comment with a green check so I know who watches all the way through. If you want to see another video just like this where I analyze a fighter's key to success, check out this video here.